I've cleaned all the parts up for the steam valve, uh, ready to assemble it. I just say to see the paint of it, and it is a beautiful bronze colour. That's proper old fashioned bronze, which is a mixture of copper and tin. I think some of the modern bronze is copper aluminium. It certainly isn't a, a nice dark colour like that. One of you all pointed out that that's two flats in there. They need a bit to put a key in, probably to screw out that spool valve. I'm certainly not going to take it out, there's no need to. So the paint's off, all the gaskets or joints have been removed. It's nice and clean, ready to go back together. The first thing to do is to make some joints. Um, I think there's four or five joints to make, or gaskets, depending on which way you want to look at it. There's quite a few ways of making these joints. I'm going to actually just tap it out of this piece of jointing paper. What you can do with your hands, we've got the right amount of muck on them or the right amount of dirt on them, you can rub around the edge and you get a nice outline. Then you can actually cut that out with a, a pair of scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is put in the, the two stud holes. Just a ball bearing on the end of a piece of stud I made for doing this job. Then I want to cut out the centre hole. Nice sharp machined edges make this easy. Then we'll cut out the outside edge. Right, so that's it. One joint which is a, a good fit on there. I'm just going to put grease on these. There is various sealing compounds you can use, but grease should be alright. It's proper joint and paper. There's two of those to make, so we'll do one more. But I'll not film doing it. Right, this is the next one we want making. Put the, I'll take the middle out of it first. Right, so that fits onto there. And the next thing is the two, the two stud holes. It's very therapeutic making joints like this. I quite enjoy it. Right, so it's basically done. As you can see it's a really good fit. One more joint to make when we can start to assemble it. This is a strange one because I need to cut out that hole first which is going to be a little bit awkward to do. I have got some Cut has four cutting joints I might just cut that one out, cut that hole out first. This is actually a set of hole cutters designed specifically for cutting out gaskets, kindly given to me by a viewer. I've obviously been cutting little wooden little wooden plugs with them as well. I've used them quite a few times, it's a nice little set. It'll be old, very old. Right, so we need to put a hole in the material. I'm using a wooden backer so it doesn't damage the bastard, so it doesn't damage the cutter. And you simply, and that cuts out the beautiful hole, which is a really nice fit on there. So we can now carry on and make the rest of the, the joint. Right, I'm going to change the way I'm holding this in the vise. I'm going to grip it lightly on those threads. The vise jaws are aluminium, which is softer than the, the bronze anyway, but you've still got to be careful. Right, so that stopped it from moving.
your hands are starting to get dirty now so you can see how you can rub on and you can actually use that as a to cut round if you so wanted to I like doing it this way right so that's all the the joints made if you remember when we when I stripped this I put pop marks with things it's only good to get one way as it happens the can only get together one way it's all it's all different inside the first thing to put in is the spool valve or the piston part of the spool valve that's a beautiful fit in there I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto it So the valve is free to move on the, the spindle. That's absolutely gorgeous in there. Next descent cap goes on. Need a little bit of grease to put on the joint. See there is various portions you can put on things, but I think grease will do. If it doesn't, I can certainly get some real nasty stuff that will not leak right so we've got two pop marks there, two pop marks there that simply goes onto there like that two nuts on there a lot of people have mentioned that there's no washers they didn't use washers on steam engines, I don't know why I've noticed this on Richard Sentinel on the engine, there's no washers. Uh, maybe in sort of motor trail I've always used flat washers, but I'm going to put it back together exactly the way it was built, which is with no washers. I did manage to buy some BSF nuts, nice new ones. Also bought this little Whitworth BSF socket set, which has proved invaluable. I'm just going to put a little nip on there, I'm not going to fully tighten them just yet until we get the, the gland in and the packing in because that's what will line it up. And with the gland follower went in like that, and the packing goes in between that. Now that's a good fit on there. So basically, if I tighten that up at that with a piston all the way to this end, it should be nicely lined up. Let it float around to find its own where it wants to be. Right, and that's that's pretty spot on, all the way up and down without any undue friction. The packing material that come out of here is probably a lot better than any modern stuff you can buy. It has a good chance to be asbestos impregnated with graphite. So I'm just going to put this little packing back in. So it works. It's it's not just wrapped round. It's all individual. What they call rings, and there's four rings of packing in here. That's the last one. Then the follower goes in. You can see it's got a, a recess in there. And that tightens down, crushes the packing, and that's what makes a steam tight seal on the shaft. And you've got all that amount of it's actually just into there, so you've got all that to take up as things wear. Initially, the, the joints wear quite quickly, and you've got to keep adjusting them. And then they find a point where they sort of settle down and they just stop like that for a long time. I 
and each of those gripping quite nicely there. We'll leave it at that for the minute. You see how it's actually putting the graphite onto the onto the spindle. Right, I'm happy with that. There you can see the piston moving up and down inside the inside the valve. And those are the two slots which as has been said probably allow that to be screwed out. There is a steam port there and there's a steam port there like a like a ring all the way around an annulus. This is absolutely top notch quality stuff this when you think how old it is. We've got two pop marks or a single pop mark there and one there. And that goes onto there. Like that. There's a union screws in there, that's where the oil feed goes. The union's been snapped off and they'll have to sort that out somehow. We'll have a look at that and see what we can do with it. Two new nuts on there. I said before that these nuts, this is quarter BSF, and your equivalent nut to quarter BSF now will be 10 mil. But a 10 mil nut is ugly compared to one of these. I'm going to 10 mil nut. Yeah, so there's the modern metric equivalent, which is six mil nut, and you can see how it's much smaller. It's just it's just ugly in comparison. I'm sorry, but it is. Right, ugly nuts. I'm just going to screw that in there to stop any bits of shite going in there. We don't want that to happen. Right. So this is the steam inlet. If you look in there, you can see the, the piston moving round. Get the camera in and you can have a close look at this, it's well worth looking at. Right, if I shine my torch off my phone into there, you can see the hopefully you can see the piston. That's the piston moving up and down. Covering and uncovering that port. This is sort of I'm trying to turn the bastard torch off now, well, there it is. Right, this is the, the steam inlet where the stop valve goes. Once again, no washers. I still like using spanners on old stuff like this, it's just sort of that's the way it was done in the day. They had spanners and they had what they call box ends, which are basically bits bastards. Bits of round tube that were heated up and hammered over the end of the nuts to make a box spanner. I've actually got still got I've got some box spanners, I bought them in a car boot sale. Quite know where they are, but I have got some.
I'm going to do a little test on it, a blow through test. So if we <sighs> it works. If I was still smoking, I could have blown smoke through there, but unfortunately, them days are gone. Or fortunately, them days are gone, should I say.